Okay, so here I have a Catholic edition ESV, JPS Tanakh, based on the Masoretic text, and an NKJV, a Protestant edition of the Bible. Looking inside the table of context, contents of my Catholic edition, you will see several of the Deuterocanonical books. We have Tobit, Judith, editions of Esther, 1st and 2nd Maccabees, Sirach, Baruch, and editions of Daniel. Now, if we look in the JPS Tanakh, based on the Masoretic text, we will see the table of contents. The exact same number of books, well, the Tanakh portion of books separated in the Torah. So we got the regular Torah, the prophets, and the writings. The Deuterocanonical books are not in this Tanakh. And then we have the same in the NKJV. With the course of rearranging of the contents. The Deuterocanonical books are missing. Now, the Britannica, for some reason, describes the Apocrypha. I mean, describes the Deuterocanon canon as the Apocrypha. But it does later list right here. Um, the term Deuterocanon is used to refer to works accepted in one canon, but not all. So we don't accept... See, the thing about, <laughs> the thing with Protestantism, when they refer to the Apocrypha, they refer to all these extra books that aren't in the canon of Scripture at all, and they group the, um, the Catholic books in with that. Um, but the Deuterocanonical books are separate from the Apocrypha. But the Britannica defines this under the Apocrypha. It says here in modern uses the apocrypha refers to an ancient jewish books ancient jewish books that are not part of the hebrew bible um, i'm going to address this i think the britannica is um it's defining what the term apocrypha is not necessarily um saying that the deuterocanon is not part of the hebrew bible it's defining the term here which 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 is fair, in my opinion, but are considered canonical in Roman Catholicism and Eastern Orthodoxy. Among the various books included are Tobit, Judith, Baruch, and Maccabees, as well as Ecclesiasticus. Uh, that is part of uh, Sirach. It's actually called Sirach. And the Wisdom of Solomon. Oh, I forgot that book. But it's, it, it was in, um, I forgot to point that out in the uh, table of contents, but it's there. Protestant churches follow Jewish tradition uh, that's not necessarily true. And judging these works uh, apophrical or non-canonical. And I'm going to show you why I think that. For one, the so the deuterocanonical books are actually found in the Dead Sea Scrolls and the Septuagint. So they're not found among the Masoretic text. But... The Masoretic text was um, composed about the 6th century. Um, some date it later to the 10th century. And it's my understanding that it is separate from canonical and, and even in some, uh, um, what's the word? Even some of the contents are separated in the Masoretic text. 
basically if you look at the Dead Sea Scrolls and the Septuagint versus the Masoretic texts, they say different things as long as, I mean, as well as the canon because the Dead Sea Scrolls have the Deuteru canon and the, um, the Septuagint has the Deuteru canon. So here I'm just going to... Let's see. Apocrypha, Greek meaning to hide away. Interesting. <laughs> and biblical literature works outside an accepted canon of scripture. The history of the term's usage indicates that it referred to a body of esoteric writings. That's also true. But what Protestants call the Apocrypha is not what Catholics call the Apocrypha. What Catholics call the Apocrypha include these these um outside works of unaccepted canon uh, which we do not include in the canon unfortunately i can't read this full article because i'm not subscribed apparently or a member which um this is the first time i'm stumbling onto this because the britannica is supposed to be a uh just an encyclopedia free knowledge here, but I guess it's wanting me to subscribe. Now, the oldest portion of scripture that we have is called the Septuagint, and it's dated to 283 to 246 uh, before Common Era. Now, <laughs> some internet, um, I want to say educators, they want to, um, what's the word, um, what's the word, discredit the Septuagint, because they believe that the Septuagint we have now cannot be verified or be the real Septuagint. However, the reason why we date the Septuagint to 283 to 246 BCE is because we have obvious evidence to date it to that. So among the Septuagint are the Deuterocanon canonical books. So this, let's just break down the Septuagint here. Septuagint is a Greek translation of the Old Testament from the original Hebrew. So the Masoretic text that we have today that was written approximately from the 6th century to the 10th century is not the original Hebrew Bible. Now, there's some scholars that would group um, this old um, original Hebrew manuscript with the Masoretic text, but, um, well, Emmanuel Tov does this, but he... I think people are misunderstanding what he's trying to get at here. He calls this the proto-Masoretic um, text. And what he means is this Hebrew Bible uh, that the Masoretic text was based on. Except um, there isn't sufficient evidence, from my point of view, that uh, the Masoretic text was... Well, the reason for that is, is if you look at the Dead Sea Scrolls and then look at the Masoretic text, there is obvious discrepancies, obvious discrepancies. And Emmanuel Tov would say, well, these, in terms of comparison, these two are almost exactly the same. But when you remove most of the canon of scripture from the Dead Sea Scrolls and then publish that and call it the Masoretic text or you know whatever theory he, he's talking about there it it it, it makes them um extremely um just um contradictory right so the Masoretic text have these um have has its structured canon and the Dead Sea Scrolls has a different canon and that same canon that the Septuagint has, these deuterocanonical books, they are, um, with additions of other books as well, 
they are um, they are written in Hebrew. They are written in Hebrew. That's that's it's something I find it very interesting there. Um, so if if there was some kind of proto Masoretic text in the Hebrew language and is ref he's referring to the Dead Sea Scrolls, obviously these two um, texts can't be the same. Anyway, moving on. The name Septuagint from the Latin Septuaginta 70 was derived later from the legend that there are 72 translators. It is um, dated to 285 to 246. Through its source, the letter of, I think that's Aristius. I think that's how you pronounce it. So we have evidence to to show the the time that the Septuagint was written down. Okay, so some of these fragments of the Septuagint were found among the Dead Sea Scrolls. So, not all the Dead Sea Scrolls were written in Hebrew. Some were written in Greek, and some were um, written in uh, in Aramaic. So there is a conglomeration of or cooperation of evidence that dates the um, the Deuterocanon to the second and third century uh, BCE. And for someone to for some educator on YouTube to suggest that the the Septuagint was corrupted. And the Septuagint we have now is, or the Septuagint that we see now is nothing uh, like the original is absurd. We have historical evidence to prove otherwise. Now, the reason why folks would say this is because the Septuagint, um, the Septuagint, there's certain things of the Septuagint that differ from the Masoretic. Now, the, the, the um the the assumption is is that the Masoretic text is correct. The Septuagint, since it's off in terms of translation, then then it couldn't be possibly be correct. Therefore, um, and therefore it's been corrupted. That's the logic here, which is absurd to me. Um. My argument for that is the Dead Sea Scrolls say say something and the Septuagint says something. And if the Dead Sea Scrolls and the Septuagint um, line up together and the Masoretic text contradicts these two texts, then I would say the more accurate one would be these texts, the Septuagint and the Dead Sea Scrolls. So one of the discrepancies that people are arguing with is this passage in, um, what is it called? Is it the book of Joel, I believe? The virgin shall conceive child. The Septuagint says, no, no, no. It wasn't over virgin. It was, what was it called? Ah, now she'll look. No, no, no. I keep, I keep thinking, what is the passage? It's the prophecy about being pierced. Oh, they claim like a lion. So, the Septuagint says pierced, right? Or dug, right? So, Septuagint, where's this reference? What psalm is this? Psalm 22? Psalm 22, 16? Is that what it is? Okay, Psalm 22, 16. Septuagint. Here we go. Now, most most Christian Bibles are actually based 
on the translation of the Septuagint, but their canon is based on the Masoretic text. I know, that's crazy, right? So silly. Um, mostly, the reason for that is, is because the KJV was based on the Vulgate, which the Vulgate was based on the Septuagint. <sighs> anyway, anyway, back to talk to. For dogs have encompassed me, a company of evildoers encircles me, they have pierced my hands and feet. Now this word pierced, the reason why the Greek translates it to pierce, which the Greek is actually translating this word named dog, right, in Hebrew. Um, Ka'aru, okay, that's the Hebrew word that... that now, this, this is the word that the Dead Sea Scrolls use. Now, the skeptics are arguing that there's no such Hebrew word, except in the Mesoretic text and the Dead Sea Scrolls, there are many examples of this word being used. In both variations, Karu with K-A-R-U and Ka'aru, uh, Dr. Brown points this out, right? So this means that the Septuagint got this right. Now, what is the Septuagint translating from? A Hebrew text. Um, Dr. Brown refutes this whole thing. And uh, Jews for Judaism, they say, basically their premise is that there's no such thing as the word ka'aru. Karu, but this isn't, this isn't, if you look in the original Hebrew, the, the, it means dug, or to dig, and um, so th this, this use, see the thing with language <laughs> is that it evolves, and um, so the Hebrew now that we, the Hebrew now that's spoken is nothing compared to the ancient Hebrew, and that's, that's the problem that these skeptics are making when they're reading ancient Hebrew. They're like, oh, well, there's no such such word in Hebrew today. Um, well, that's a silly argument, my friend. Um, oh, look at this. A strong concordance. Do they have a lexicon? They dug, they have digged, they dug. So, the Dead Sea Scrolls have this same word. Same word. Now, the argument is, is that this Ka'aru, just, it's, it's, it's an error, right? So, they meant uh, Ka'iru, like a lion. But if you look at the context of the psalm, Psalm 22. This whole thing about like a lion is completely absurd. Because the, because the verb ending, uh, or, you know, the the way the Hebrew is structured with the verbs and stuff like that. Um, yeah, there's, there's supposed to be, so the way the Hebrew is structured is there's supposed to be a verb, and that verb there is to either pierce or dig. Now, I will grant that dig or pierce isn't exactly the same, of course. But if we're looking at that through our modern eyes, well, of course not. But these ancient, <laughs> these ancient Jewish people, they, um, they probably didn't have the word for pierced, right? Because pierced is a modern invention of the word. Right. This is this is a modern English word. Right. Right. The, the the Jewish people didn't speak, or the Israelites, or David, did not speak English. English didn't exist. So, if you want to be a fair, if you want to um, fairly compare the two words, having had a hole made, boom. Having had a hole made, what do you do when you dig? <laughs> What do you do when you dig? You make a hole. Come on, man. Oh. So, it is, it is my conclusion of the evidence here. 
which um, which I could have gone more in depth with uh, with the um, the variations of Kaharu and the Masoretic text and the Dead Sea Scrolls. But Dr. Brown already does that, and you should look up Dr. Brown to see. But anyway, my my overall clincher is here is the Septuagint. Is obviously um, using well the Septuagint translates from a a biblical text here a a an early Hebrew text. Now some say they can't be translated correctly, or some say that it's been corrupted. But um, I'm just saying if you if you if you're going to do that based on um, the variations between the Masoretic text. And the Septuagint, that's not really a fair assessment. And this is the same thing the Protestants are doing when they compare the Deuterocanon with the, the Deuterocanon of the Septuagint and the Dead Sea Scrolls with the um, with the canon of the Masoretic text. That's not that's not a fair assessment. If the oldest manuscripts have the canon that way, then it's fair to say that that's supposed to be the canon of the Bible. So, let's look up Deuterocanon. Deuterocanon in Dead Sea Scrolls. In fact, it is. In fact, the Dead Sea Scrolls, which contain Jewish writings from the Four hundred years to eighty hundred include copies of Deuterocanon books like Sirach, Tobit, and Baruch. So they're in there, and they're written in Hebrew. Now, some, as you know, as people probably know, editions of other books such as Enoch, and um, I think the something called the Epistle of Moses and stuff like that um, are in there, and they're. Some of these, well, I know for a fact that Enoch is written in Greek. Let's let's actually double check that. Okay, here we go. Various Aramaic fragments found in the Dead Sea Scrolls, as well as the Koine Greek and Latin fragments, are proof that the Book of Enoch was known by Jews. So, the Book of Enoch, it says here, the fragments among the Dead Sea Scrolls were in Koine Greek, which is an ancient form of Greek. Koine Greek is actually a standard Greek. It's like a, um, it's like standardized Greek. Basically, like, so everybody... Everybody in like Western countries, like England and well, Britain as a whole, and some countries among the world, they all speak this thing called English, but they all speak in a form called standardized English. Now, each each country probably and each each city, each section of that country has its own dialect of that language, but they all speak. In a standardized English. This is the same thing. This is what Koine Greek is. It was a standardized Greek. Um, it was a very elementary type of dialect. Well, not really dialect. It's, it's just a standardized, you know, um, versus the the old Greek that was more, um, well, I'm not an expert on Greek, so it's all Greek to me. But my overall point here is that the Septuagint has the Deutero canon. And that the Septuagint is over a thousand years older than the Masoretic text. The Dead Sea Scrolls are almost the same age older than the Masoretic text. Both of them have the Deuterocanon. Okay, so why doesn't Protestant Bibles have the Deuterocanon? I'll tell you. Martin Luther. Martin Luther removed the Deuterocanon. 
In fact, in the early KJV, the Deuterocanon was in the Protestant Bibles. Oops. Arthur Luther removed seven books. Let's see. I mean, let's find a fair source. I can't just pull something off the internet and make it say whatever. Hmm. I mean, you can verify this, but you know what? Let's just... Cause people, some, a lot of people don't know this. This says from Pinbook Center. I, have, I don't know if this is a good source or not. Um, but uh, the removal of the seven books from the Bible by Lord Luther is an important part of the Reformation and his legacy. Boom. Right there. He removed the seven books, the Deuterocanon books, from the Scripture. That's why Protestants don't have it. So it wasn't that, that the church, the Catholic Church, adds seven books to the Bible. It's that these seven books were removed from from Martin Luther. Why? Because they conflicted with his, with his, um, what are they called? The five solas. And that concludes my lecture on the Deuterocanon.